Hey everyone, Darren Carnell here. Welcome back to my studio. Welcome back to a very dark studio. I haven't put any of my lights on. Hang on. I put this light on and I didn't put any of the others. Stay there. Hang on. Uh, put that one on and put that one on. Those batteries are running out. I need to replace that. That should be brighter. And go behind here. I'm currently behind my shelf. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Hi. Um, welcome back to my studio. Welcome back to my now fully lit studio. No, actually, almost fully lit. There you go. That's the one that I work under. Um, but it needs to be on because I'm going to be painting. So, what was I saying? Kylo Ren, that's what we're doing. Um, welcome to part, oh my goodness. I think the last one was part seven. I think this might be part eight. Uh, Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren. Video was part seven, okay. So last time we did, what did we do last time? I did a ton of face stuff, I think is what we did. Um, in this one, we're gonna start off doing a bit of the stubble. And I think we're just going to jump around the face doing bits of things as we see them because we're at that stage now where you can just sort of do bits of anything and there's no need to put down certain layers in certain orders and I almost try and make it a deliberate thing where I don't do them all exactly the same. I try and forget how I've done previous ones, which as anyone who knows me, it's probably quite easy for me because I forget everything anyway. Um, but I try not to do them all in exactly the same way because I want them all to be individual. I want things that I paint. Even if I've painted 10 of the same head, I want them all to look like the person that they're supposed to be, but I want them all to be different. That's the whole point of them being hand painted with brushes. Um, I want them to be individual, but realistic at the same time. So you get to a certain stage and you'll do some of the layers in a certain order. You put down the base layer, then maybe you'll do some dry brushing, then a few washes, and you do a few things in certain orders. But it gets to a certain stage and you just go, I'm just going to dot around the face looking to see what I think needs to go where. I'll put a bit of stubble shading on there. I'll put a bit of brown under the eyes. I'll put a bit of bluish purple under the eyes and maybe the corner of the lips. I'll do some red on and you just jump around seeing well I think that bit can be better, that bit can be darker, that bit can be lighter and do whatever you see when you see it and then it's also a bit more fun than doing things in the same order at the same time every time. So that's what we're going to do but I do know I want to start with the stubble just because I was last time I was looking at that I was thinking I think I want to put the stubble layer on next. So that's what we're going to do. Let me just double check that everything is recording and everything. The recording is on. The music is on. My microphone is on. Yes. Okay. I'll slide my paint in. Get the stuff out of the way. Get the water and the flow enhancer out of the way. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. Um, let's bring this in I'll tell you what I can do where's my camera settings there they are I will I always forget to put this back but I will darken this camera so that because I've got the light right in front of me so I'm not too bright for you guys um, I will switch over to hang on I need to make the light brighter on my Stream Deck button things. You know the I did a video about this. Some of you might have seen it. Hopefully, a lot of you saw it. Of the little console thing that I have on my desk now. It's like a mini TV studio thing. I just push buttons to do certain things. Well, when I'm just working normally, doing emails and stuff, I have that dimmed down. There's the little screens on the buttons because it's quite bright, and I don't want it glaring in my face all the time. So I turn the buttons down. But I forgot that I'd done that. And I brought this light in, and when you bring this light in, it shines light on the thing, and you get a load of reflections. And unless they're on full brightness, you can't see them. So, I've just put that back on full brightness. 
What was I going to do? Um, oh, I can't remember what I was going to do. Um, what the hell was I going to do? Was I just going to do that, probably? Hello. Right. For some reason, I was looking at those buttons and going, I don't know what I was doing. And I think I was just doing this. So let's get that roughly there. If I'm holding a thing, painting, that's going to be about there. Yeah, that works. Okay. Take the super high-tech Kylo Ren protector off. Let's bring him in. Actually, let's... Should we zoom in a little bit? What camera are we on? Camera two? No, camera one, sorry. Because it changed. Camera one. Bink. Bink. Okay, that's as far as it goes. So that's where we're up to with Kylo Ren. It's starting to get lots of... If I bring it too close, it'll get out of focus. Hang on, let me... Move the focus up a bit. So he's got lots of good detail going on on the skin all over the place and now we can start to add extra things on top of it. Um, I suppose I could leave that there. If I'm trying to paint this. Um, I could probably try and do some like that. It's awkward to paint that close to the camera because I have to hold it in a very certain position height wise so it doesn't go out of focus or anything like that I also have to hold it in a very particular position the more you're zoomed in left and right and up and down because it's got to be in the middle of the camera and when I'm actually looking at the thing not my screen it's kind of difficult to keep it in the one place where you need it but also if I'm painting there that's the angle that I have the head at if I'm pointing it at me so I can see I need to point it like that which is sort of it's like like pointing it at the ceiling, which is sort of difficult to paint. But I can do a bit. I can do some and let you guys see a bit of it. Where do I put the focus? So it's actually about there. So if I rest my elbow on the desk there, that holds it at about the right height. I think. Let me just make my preview screen bigger so I can see a bit clearer what you get actually the focus is there so i can't hold it up like that it's got to be okay so about there i can do that so let's do this let's put that back over there for a second uh, i'm going to do some stubble um when i'm doing stubble i usually start off with grey-blue or blue-grey it was on the old um, paints the old MP paints that I used to use let's bring that seeing as I'm zoomed in a bit more push all the paints up to the top put that there so you can see it. even though it's out of focus you can still see what I'm doing uh, now when I'm doing stubble I used to just do a wash with this sort of colour and then I changed it and started adding in different colours, bit of umber maybe, um, along with it. But you, I always, well not always, I don't have a set plan. I often start off with just a wash of, where is it, this stuff, and then build up with the the darker shades so I'm just what I'm doing I know it's off camera for a second I'm just getting some water and some flow enhancer and I'm doing a very thin wash now this is super thin to start with so I just got some water there took a little bit of paint made a thin wash where's the focus <laughs> I'm not used to holding the palette this high um, made a thin wash over there then basically got some more water over here and just let some of it trickle in so it's a bit it's even thinner it's like really super thin here 
and this paint is just sort of running in a little bit so i have a bit of control here i've got a really super thin bit here and if i go over here i've got a slightly thicker mix obviously i've got the original paint there so i can add more in if i need it but that's fine see how that looks it's basically like what's that oh excuse me <coughs> oh that's something in my throat uh where's a dark bit there's a dark bit of brown so you can see how you do that it's basically oh my god <coughs> Carlo Ren episode 7 was when Darren Carnell died on camera <laughs> I felt like I had a bit of I don't know wood or something stuck in my throat it still feels like it's there a bit so I may carry on coughing I don't know so look I've got some of this bluish wash I actually think that's too much. I'm going to take it down a little bit. Where's my elbow got to go? On the corner there. Now, I'm looking at pictures of him um, for his stubble. Now, his stubble is quite thin around these sides bit. Sides bit? <laughs> these side bits. There's a little bit underneath here, which we're not really going to see much of, but I'm going to put a little bit there anyway. He has some up the side there and then most of his stubble is under the chin and on the sides of his upper lip so what i'm going to do is do just a little bit now because this is going to be done again with darker mixes and some flicking but this for now is just getting the thinnest of the thin layers down so what I'm doing is just getting, see how it's just, it's colouring the skin slightly bluish. That's all I'm doing at this point. Very subtle. Now that was way too much paint on there. Let's get most of that off. Do some under the chin. Now, I'm going to do a few layers under the chin because that's where he has it the darkest. And this is the light colour that I'm doing, sort of bits of everywhere. Um, but we're going to go back, do a few extra bits and darker bits, and they are mostly going to be around there. And this isn't the thinnest brush that I could have picked because I'm only doing it with the super light Um layer of stubble i don't mind if it's a little bit messy because it's not not too dark or anything i mean he doesn't have much in the way of stubble in the middle sort of that bit there so i'm going to leave that mostly empty i'm just going to put a little bit of the blue on there well you know what's left of the blue water but the rest of it we'll get the extra layers now you can't even really see that. You can see it's a bit more shiny. I mean, it's sort of shiny everywhere at that, at this level because we're so close to the light. But you can sort of see it there. That it's a little bit grey, a little bit blue. You can see a little bit there as well. This bottom layer, that's all it is. Going to do another little bit, even though I usually wait for it to dry. I'm going to do a few extra bits of the blue grey under there you can see that there I'm going to come back with the darker stuff I'm going to do a couple of bits just on the sides there now one thing I always preach when I'm doing stubble or when I'm teaching people how to do stubble what's just as important as getting the colours right is getting the shape right and i mention this on every series that i do i think or every series where i have to paint stubble um every person has their own shape of stubble or beard or mustache on their face and when i started i just used to do a wash of blue gray like what i've just been doing now and i would just do it all over the generic beard location you know where you would imagine oh well, there's a mustache and there's a beard and we'll do it sort of just all along his chin there and i would 
you know, get a, 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 a to the head that I was working on, and I would basically paint the sort of bead colour all down here, all over the chin, all up to the upper lip and across and all the way up there. And I would do the thin blue gray wash. Just, I would cover the whole beard place. And I would do it fairly subtle and I would blend it in, but it would cover the whole thing without really looking. And I only did this at the very beginning before I started realizing, oh, there's more here that I should be paying attention to. And I started looking at what shape, and I think, I think it was Indiana Jones, the first one, and I was doing his stubble. And he has a particular shape of stubble, and there's the, the stubbly dark bits, and then there's a light bit of skin, and there's particular shapes. And we, as people who have been watching these films, or looking at photos of these people, or collecting statues, or whatever, we know the shape of people's stubble, even if we don't realise it. So if you paint that wrong, it'll be one of those things that you will do that will help it not look as good as it could do. So shape is just as important as color. Now, while I've been doing that, that's been drying a little bit, but I'm gonna let it dry some more. But what I'm gonna do is use that color while I've got it, that bluey gray. I'm gonna take some of that wash on a different brush, but a little bit more pointy now. And I'm going to drop some bits in. Let's get my elbow in the right place there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use this blue. Make sure I've got it in the right place for the camera. I'm going to drop some blue in these corners here. I'll try and make sure you can see it. And there's a few different colors that need to be going on under his eyes. I think I need to lower the, the focus there because it's actually easier for me to hold it about there. Now the problem is I can zoom it out. Of, have I just zoomed out the wrong camera there? Oh, there you go. If I zoom it down just a little bit and also lower the focus a little bit. Oh no, hang on, the focus is too Low there, so come on, focus up, up, up. Okay. Nope, went a little bit too far. That'll do. Now there's a few colours that need to be going on here. I want a brownish version. They're all slight the different versions of a similar colour. They'll sort of be mixed into each other, but there's like a brownish version here bit of purple here, bit of blue-grey there, bit of um, brownish umber mixed um, blue-grey down here, more purple under here, bit of red under there. So there's a bunch of different shades under the eyes. Instead of just painting the eyes, there's a lot going on. And the more of that you can get on there, my birth and there will look. So I'm just, right now, while I've got it, while it's handy, while it's on my palette and I've got the brushes, I'm just adding a little bit of the blue-grey to the corner of his eyes. I'm going to, let's see, let's thin most of that off on my thumb. I'm going to take some of that also down and across under his eyes, even though that's going to be mixed in with a different colour. I still want some of that underneath this, so that'll work there. So if I do that, that will help with that. I think, actually what I'm going to do while I'm doing the eyes, because there's not too many places where I want to put the bluey grey. Actually, you know what, let's bring that back for one second. Because what I also try and do when I'm doing heads is sometimes think about where could I put this colour where you wouldn't necessarily think that the color should go or would normally go, but might work if I do it. So you're sort of trying to be almost deliberately weird, <laughs> deliberately a little bit out of the box and, and a bit different from what you'd expect. And I think I'm gonna put some blue on the edge of his cheeks here. Not too much, I'm gonna dab some of that off. I just want to give 
a slightly different shade. For, forgive me for moving that there. I had to reach across to, you know what? So I won't have to do that. <laughs> Get my um, kitchen roll on the other side. I had it on that side because that's where this is. But then I realized I'm doing close up stuff and I need to wipe it. I've got to sort of reach right across the, the underneath of the camera. Um, even though the cheeks and the mouth bit are sort of skin color with bits of purple and bits of red and you know blush and the flicking that we did and oh, there's going to be stubble here i just thought okay i think it'll break it up it'll make it a little bit weird a little bit different if i just put a bit of blue i'm trying to look at this so i can see what i'm doing a little bit of it there a little bit of it there, and I'm going to wipe the brush off because I haven't got the two brush method because I haven't picked up a second brush. So I'm just going to wipe off the brush and use the same brush to blend the edges and dab with my finger. And that is just, well, let me just look at this without the camera for a second. That's just subtle. I'm sure you can see it. Okay, you can see it a little bit from that angle there. A little bit of light blue, or, you know, blue-gray, just because I felt it would add a nice different layer. The more different colors and different layers that you can get on there while still keeping the same overall tone, the better. So that's something that I thought that'll work there. And actually, you know what? While I've got it, I'll do another one of those. Let's add some onto his cheeks. Let me just a few dots of blue grey. Super subtle. I can just about see this coming off the brush. You probably won't see anything because it's so subtle. Just a few dots all over his cheeks, just to add something. Why not? A few little bits on top of his forehead. Again, why not? If it's subtle enough, nobody will see it, but that's a good thing because they won't see it in a bad way, but they will see subconsciously the variation all over the skin. That makes things look more human. So let's go back to his eyes. I wanted to add some extra brown into that stuff. I would added a bit of blue in the corner. I'm going to add some brown to the top arches. Now, how did I do these last time? I felt brown. I had mahogany. There's mahogany. Um, it wasn't flat, but light brown, maybe. Yeah, that should do. Let's get some light brown, which is this colour. a blob of that on there and you need a little bit um, I'm gonna put a tiny drop of mahogany up, down mahogany brown down I'm not gonna bother mixing it up because I, I don't really care at this stage oh sorry burp because I'm just using it to get a rough color so again lots of water Bit of light brown, a bit of mahogany brown. Again, not holding the thingy up close enough. There you go. So that colour is from that colour and a bit of that colour. Uh, let's make that a little bit darker. A bit darker again. That should do. Right, so I'm going to chuck a load of water in there. Same thing I did with the blue. I'm going to throw a load of water on the palette, let it run away from where the original thick paint was, and then I can control how much I'm using because I'll be using more water than paint. So, let's just a bit of water on the brush, give that a wipe to make sure there's no original paint on there, and now I can just go in and use 
the brown wash. Get rid of most of it because I don't need that much. And I just want to add a little bit of brown. So I'm just looking at a couple of pictures. A lot of this is just sort of from eye, but I'm also checking the pictures just to make sure that I am keeping things within the, you know, within the sphere of looking like Adam Driver. So bits of brown under there. I can actually do that a little bit thicker. But you're not going to see a huge jump on camera because it's still, again, this is all subtle, subtle, subtle. Slow and subtle build-ups. So when I've got that brown, let's add a bit. All right, I need two brushes here. I need to do the two brush thing. So let me pick up a second brush. That one will do. Okay, so... The dry brush is in my mouth, I am now talking weird because I'm holding a brush in my mouth, but... And also, while I was doing that, the paint was drying. Hang on, let me get rid of that. <laughs> okay. So... A little bit of the brown. Um, coming down that ramp that goes onto his cheek. I'm just going to... Blend it in, feather the edges, soften it up, do the same on the other side because I wiped most of it off. Go back in and just feather the edges, soften it up. That's just a nice little bit of colour. I'm going to add a little bit of colour to the bottom of the nose. I mean, not just a little bit of colour, it's already got colour on it, but a little bit of this brown colour. Uh, again, going with the dry brush, just soften it up a bit. Uh, eeny, meeny, Let's take some of that brown up from the eye socket to his frowny bits that sort of start to go onto his forehead. Um, let's pour a little bit on his cheeks, a little bit uh, subtle, very soft. Um, you know what, also, let's do some under his eye sockets. Just because it was looking a little bit plain. And that'll help. Okay, that's looking good. I'm just hold it away for a sec. Let's have a proper look at it. He's looking really good. I can start to see him. I know he's bright when I hold him up to the camera, but he's really starting to look properly like Adam Driver now. Or more accurately, like Kylo Ren. Um Let's take a bit more of this brown. Just do a couple of random bits. Up there. Now, that brown is good and works, but I also want to add in some. Uh, let's see. Brown there. Blue there, let's get some purple. So I'm going to drop a little bit of red next to the blue. Tiny amount, I don't really need much. I'm not doing a huge mix of colour here. I'm going to mix it in the next thing just to get it away from the original paints. Didn't need much paint because I'm only doing a small amount and I need it to be really thin. So. It was a tiny drops of paint and I've just mixed uh, that colour. Sort of, I don't know, like a dark lavender. I don't know what, what colour you'd call that. But I'm going to take that 
and do some so I had the blue there um, I want the purple to be so we've already done some of the well, roughly the same color last time under his eyes so we've got most of it covered I'll take a little bit more out from his eyes. I'm actually going to put a little bit while I've got it on his bottom lip because I know I want to do his bottom lip lighter than his top lip and that's sort of the right shade. Um, but what I also want to do if I can get some of that red and because that's sort of it for the that purple. I only needed a couple of little tiny bits. So I've just mixed some more red into it to make it that colour. So if I take some of that and I want to make the tips of his eye sockets more red. Actually I could probably get that off my hand. Um, than the purpley bit underneath. So just a bit immediately under his eyes. Just make that a little bit more red. Now that I've got this red, I'm going to add a few random blobs on his lips. Not fully painting the colour, but just doing a few bits here and there. Um, eeny meeny miny, let's do a little bit on the bottom of his nostrils where we've already painted that colour. I'm just going to take a little bit and just lower it down and take it a little bit off the nose onto the, the skin of the face around the moustache. Just blend that in a little bit. That looks good. Um, I'll take some of this red down here, a little bit close to where his stubble is going to be. Smooth it out, do the same on the other side because even though you don't want it to look identical, you want it to look you know roughly symmetrical so it doesn't look odd. But you don't want to paint both sides exactly the same because that does look odd. There's a little bit of the red colour on the bottom which added to the blue-grey will help darken it a little bit which will help get it ready for the darker stubble colour that we're going to do. Um, okay. He's looking really good here. Let's put this to one side a sec so I can just wipe the brush off. Now then, let's do... Oh, got the burps. Hiccups and burps. <laughs> um, let's do another little bit of the stubble now. So we're going to take that blue-grey stuff that we were using. That's still liquidy enough to use. And I'm going to take a little bit of... Ugh. I'm going to get some... Ah, I don't want black. <laughs> Wrong colour, Darren. Black-brown, which is sort of umber as from my old paints. It's it's not really, it's a little bit darker, but it's close enough for what I use it for. And I don't need a lot of it anyway, so if I'm gonna get, where the hell is this focus? I'm not used to holding this palette so high. <laughs> so I'll take a little bit of the umber color. I'm gonna mix it in with that blue gray. Sort of makes it a bit more gray 
but I'm gonna make it darker like that. Um, I might actually chuck a little bit. Where's the brown that I used? The uh, paint on my arm, on my hand. I'm gonna take a little bit of the mahogany brown that I was using before, mix that in, just to warm it up a little bit. Just that stuff there. Uh, thin it right down again. Because this is, um, we're going to do flicking on the stubble. We'll probably do that in the next video, but I'm going to put down the, the pre darker, um, the stuff. Well, I can't even speak today. <laughs> when I'm doing the stubble, I do, I do several layers of colored wash first. Then I go on top with the flicking. And if anything needs hand painting, I do that at the end. Um, but these are the colours that I'm doing at the start where I'm doing the washes. So it's it's the blue-grey bit, do a few layers of that. Then I add some of this dark stuff, do a few layers of that. Then I do the flicking. Um, to add that into it. So that's the colour there. Now then, that's probably safe. Where's the focus? Where's the focus? Okay, so the focus is there. So if I... Let's do this so you can see. Oh, two brushes. Let's do the two brush thing. But I've got to be careful here because this is sort of still a little bit wet and sticky from the previous stuff and if I'm too vigorous with it, it'll just ru uh, wash everything off. You gotta be gentle when you're doing this. So let's do his upper lips. So his upper lips basically there's a gap on the top and the bottom, and it just goes over the edge up to the middle. Okay, I was just figuring out where I'm trying to do this in a way where I can see what I'm doing. So comes down the middle of his upper lip. And then just over the edge. So I soften that up a little bit. That's okay. Let's do the same here. Where are we? So from the middle down the upper lip but leaving a gap at the bottom and at the top and then when it gets to the side it just goes over the edge a bit like a you know a moustache waterfall but we'll go back with a few layers of this so we're just softening this up just filling in a bit there where it had done what I said where if you're not careful and you've just painted some layers thin layers um, you know which is with the sort of almost water but they're thin layers of color if you've done some of them quite recently and it's not fully dry yet and even if it is fully dry they're still delicate if you go back on top with another brush and you start dabbing away if you're not gentle enough or if they're not dry enough which they're not in this case because i'm trying to keep things going for the video you can rub things off and i basically rubbed a hole in his mustache <laughs> um so i was just filling it in and the extra layers and the flicking will make sure that that's okay oops that's way too thick there Actually, that worked. So if I'm quick enough, I'm going to get this brown. Can you make sure we're on camera? Put these blobs of brown down. See the blobs of brown? 
and then go in with the extra brush, dab it around. My problem is the more liquid I'm putting on, it is actually rubbing off the paint underneath because it needs it to be more dry. This is a problem that you sometimes, or I sometimes have, it's not a thing that you're going to come across with when you're painting, but it's a problem that I sometimes have when I'm doing these videos, is that sometimes I'll try and paint things quicker than I would normally, just so the video is moving along and I'm not because often I would just put something to, a, to one side for a couple of hours, do something else, and I would normally do that. And I could do that with these videos. I could, you know, put things down when I needed to. But the problem with that is that I then have to go back and, you know, manually edit each video to cut out all the bits where I've stopped and done something else. And with the amount of painting that I'm trying to do and the tutorials and make sure I'm caught up on my commissions, editing is a thing that takes up a lot of my time and I try and remove editing as much as I can, which is why these videos are always in real time. Because there's two reasons for that. One is actually beneficial to me because it means I can do it, get it up to you guys straight away without having to wait to edit it because that adds another process. And then when I edit it, I have to re-generate re the video and that usually takes about 12 hours or something stupid for some reason. Um, and I just don't have time to do it. But the other good part is that it lets you see in real time what I'm doing. So a lot of like the way YouTube videos are cut up, chop, 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 they're done to be as short as possible. And you do, you miss a lot of stuff when they do that. Now what I'm going to do, while there's a little bit of colour on, on this brush, and this isn't going to be the final shape or anything because he's got specific shape eyebrows, but I'm just getting a little bit of colour on the bit where the eyebrows are sculpted. Little thin wash, and I'm just going to blend it around so it's not got a hard edge on it or anything. It's just a, 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 a pre-layer, if you want to call it something. Just getting a super little... Oh, that's got a hair in it, that bit. Go away. Just a little light bit of shade. And it's roughly the right shade, which is why I'm using it. On his eyebrows. Blend in the edges. And we'll go back, obviously, with more layers later on when we're doing the eyebrows properly. And there'll be more layers, and there'll be different colours, and they'll be painted to specific shapes that his eyebrows are. And there'll also be individual hairs painted on, and all the usual stuff that we do. But I just, I had that colour on my brush, and I thought, you know what, that's not far from the eyebrow colour. Let's put a little bit down. It'll help. Now, can you see... Worked okay on that side, that just sort of blended in a little bit and the stubble will, when I do the flicking, will have extra texture and then I can also go in with the skin colour and just lighten up any bits that I feel afterwards could do with not being as heavy. But you can see here there's a, it looks like a circle of dark, that's because that bit in the middle, the wet and the brush movement was just rubbing off the paint from underneath it and that then stops any paint from sticking to it until it's dried. It just turns into a weird thing. So I'm just going to have to let that dry and then go back in with the the skin colour that we have there and this brown colour and just redo that little bit there. But only in the same way that we did there. Bit on, dab, 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 dab. Just to make it look like there's a bit of shadow there. And he has... I can't remember which brush has the paint on, which brush has... <laughs> Right, that was the dry one. So he has a little bit of stubble under there. 
right under his lip so I'm just doing a few dots and dabs get the dry brush blend it in a little bit just a little bit under the you can sort of see how the under chin bit is looking so it's sort of randomly dabbed and dotted on but sort of blended in a little bit not super smooth it's not airbrush or anything it's deliberately you know blotchy and and jumpy um, because we're going to be putting flicking on top of that and that will make it look like stubbly hair because even when he's clean shaven he's he's not really clean clean shaven um, but I might go back afterwards because I sometimes do with a wash of skin colour on top just to set things back a little bit and that's a good way of doing it. Now what I've just noticed what I can do while I've got this brownish colour remember we put a little bit of purple into his nose well, I'm just going to take some of this thin dark brown colour and set some of that into his nostrils just to make it a little bit darker don't want too much in there Sorry, I was just blowing on that to dry it a little bit to stop the liquid from running around. So I've just added a little bit of shadow in there just so it's a little bit darker. So it just helps with the um, you know, the effect of having the shadows. But what's probably going to happen is I'll go in with some skin colour around the edges of the nostrils just to make sure that the skin colour there's as much of the normal skin colour as you can see mm. uh, as you would see on a normal person and I'll take that just around the edges and up into it a little bit in fact I'm just going with this brush now and just make sure that the edges are clear of the dark stuff Okay, now if I can, where's my camera stuff gone? I can zoom it back out and where's the focus? So the focus still needs to be high up if it's on my elbow. See, adding even just that moustache bit of shading is good because he's got a very you look at pictures of Adam Driver he's got a very particular shape moustache and, and beard stubble never really seen him with a beard but the stubble very particular shape um, even though Kylo Ren is clean shaven you can still see the shape so I'm going to do that get this on there and then if I think it's too dark which it probably will be it'll probably be more than we want but i want that, that there so this can act like an under shading and then i'll just go in with a, a wash of the skin color and just set it back a little bit into the skin and that'll help okay what else how long is this whoa 50 minutes already how the hell have we done 50 minutes already it feels like i've only just started Where's all this time going? Okay, let's pick one more thing. What do I want to do? 
Now, I know the Hot Toys, I remember I've actually got a picture of the Hot Toys head, the last Jedi head up, and his lips are a weird colour. This looks like an orangey brown colour on the photo. I don't know if it's the production head or if it's the, uh, the prototype head, but they're not his colour. His lips are a quite pinkish shade. Um, so I'm not gonna, sometimes you paint lips and they are more, um, more red. Sometimes you paint lips and they are more skin colored. Sometimes you paint them and they are more brown. Um, in this case, he's got quite pink, um, quite bright lips. So I'm just gonna chucking some red down in the already red color that I had. And I'm taking the thinnest wash of that and just adding a little bit more to his lips just to pick up the colour on them a bit more. Let's get a bit more red. Let's get the other brush. Okay, so let's take some of that red that I was using. I'm going to drop some into the corner of his eyes. Now the eyeballs are going to be painted anyway. That'll be one of the next stages that we do. But I'm just dropping... Oh, I've moved the focus, haven't I? <laughs> I really wish these cameras auto-focused really well, but they just don't. So. I just dropped some of that watery red mix. Just take some off in case I accidentally touch the head. Um, that I was using all over the place and I just put some on his lips and I've just dropped a little bit in the corner of his eye there and the corner of his eye there. And it's not done a full color paint of it. It's not like painting it with the color but because it's so thin, it's it's gone in there and it's tinted it but then a lot of the liquid has run along that bottom edge because it's so thin it doesn't look really obvious but what it'll do even though we're going to be painting the eyeball so we're going to go over any of that that's on the eyeball it'll just help color the bottom edge of the eyelid and it's it, entirely possible that when we're painting the eyes we'll go over that anyway but if we don't it's there and that'll look good I mean look at that he's looking really good there Ignore the shine. You can imagine it without the shine, just because that's you know we're working on it and we're using Flow Enhancer. Once that's gone, psh, we've covered it with the matte spray. I can I can hear him delivering pouty lines from the Force Awakens. <laughs> I'm going to take a bit of that red. Um, and do a little bit of it under. the bags of his eyes. I just want to make them stand out a little bit more. Focus, focus down. I'm going to take some under the eye there. Random things here. Um, just dab a little bit of red in the corner there, just 
to give the the shading and the shadow a little bit more visual interest. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Now where we put the brown on his nose and then took it down the side, just adding a little bit of red to the top around the bridge, you know, you're going up towards the bridge of the nose, just so it looks like the, the shadow is a slightly different colour and there's something else going on with the skin because, you know, we've all got different coloured skin in different places and the nose is one that often ends up being quite red or whatever so I'm just adding some there to make it look like like there's something going on a lot of it is just doing that making it look like there's stuff going on and here he does now again for me he looks really pale on the preview but in person I can see him and he looks Kylo Ren colored <laughs> so I'm hoping he doesn't look too bad over there for you. Let's zoom in a little bit more there. He looks quite good. Okay, um, well, seeing as this has been over three quarters of an hour already, which I'm not sure how, um, we'll leave it for that. This is, I know, in, in all of this stuff, let's do that. Let's move that out of the way and... Um, I darkened this camera, hadn't I? So camera that one and go to that one. It was only a little bit darker, but it helps. And then I've got to remember to put it back light. Um, I know these videos are at the stage where the videos sort of go by and it feels like not much is happening for quite a few of them. And that is what it's like for me when I'm painting my commissions. That's how I get the results that I get. A lot of it is just doing subtle stuff. And if you're going by half an hour or three quarters of an hour or an hour, sometimes you'll look at the end of that and look at the start and you go, but it doesn't look any different. I know, believe me, I've been doing this for 13 years. I know that's what, that's what it looks like. Um, and you'll do that. But then if you look at the end of five hours of doing it and all the layers that you've built up and then looked back at the start of that you'll be like whoa that's way more realistic it builds up if you're doing it in short chunks it can often feel especially if if i'm trying to do a video and make sure that you're not falling asleep it can feel like not much is happening but it is all vital parts of making it look like where it's going to look like in the end so this is just one of those parts um, where you do some stuff and it doesn't look hugely different at the end but it is really important and you've built on it and you've added more to it and then when we get to the end when it looks like Kylo Ren when it looks like Adam Driver you only have that because of all these slow bits that you did so they are important um, so that's number what was it? 8 I think um, just trying to I've got so many reference pictures on my screen. I was blocking parts of my um, recording software. I couldn't see what I was up to. 58 minutes. Holy crap. That went fast. I don't know what happened there. I know it took like two minutes to turn my lights on at the beginning, but I don't know where that time went. I think I've clearly just been doing certain types of painting where I'm, I've been getting faster results lately. So now that I'm doing on these videos on this series at the moment, a lot of slow stuff which normally I would have done by myself with nobody watching, um, listening to music in my own little world, just spending hours and days doing little tiny slow things. And I would never have paid attention to the time. So for me, it would have just happened when it happened. But now that I'm making videos, I'm noticing the time and thinking, has that been an hour? What did I do? <laughs> but it's what it's how I did it. That's how I got all, all of the things that you've seen that I've painted. This is how I did them. Um, so that was part eight. Thanks for sticking around with me. Thanks for putting up with me when I didn't turn my lights on at the beginning. Um, in the next video, we will carry on with the stubble. What I want to do is do the flicking, but also do the 
uh, make sure it's pushed back enough into the skin that it, you can see it, but it's not a thing that jumps out at you too dark. I want to make sure it's at the right level and we will do that by adding the skin wash on top. And um, I'll also be doing some flicking just to add proper tiny little details onto it that you will hardly see because it's going to be subtle and he doesn't have like a big beard or anything. So it's going to be super subtle, but that's going to help. And then once I've done that, I think I'm going to start on the eyes. I think we'll paint the eyeballs. We'll mix the color for the eyeballs, um, which when I started, I used to paint eyeballs white. And so many people still paint eyeballs white. Your eyes aren't white. They're not. It's like teeth. People paint teeth white. Teeth aren't white either. They're just not. Unless you live in Hollywood and you have plastic teeth. Everyone else, teeth are not white. Eyeballs are not white. So we'll mix some color. We'll do the eyeballs. Eyeballs are the same as everything else. They're built up with layers, but we start off with essentially cream. Now, these paints, because I've, I've a lot of, I'm starting to get used to the reds and the browns and stuff, but um, the other colors I've not really used as much. Now, I have ivory here, which is sort of similar to the pale flesh that I used to use. Um, they're not identical but they're sort of close enough that I can use that and add layers to it. Um, so we start off with that sort of color, maybe mix in a little bit of yellow or yellow ochre, um, bit of gray. Sometimes I mix it in with the first layer. Sometimes I put layers on top, but we build it up and it's the same as everything else. So I think we'll do the stubble, we'll do the, 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 the wash, or maybe even just dry painting, dry brushing, but you're dabbing to push it back um, to the level where we want it. And then we'll start on the eyes, maybe start giving the hair a darker, um, a few darker washes as well to get that. Because obviously that was quite light. We did like a, 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 a base layer, which is way lighter than it needs to be. And also I've been holding it. And because it was so thin, a lot of it's been rubbing off the, the peaks of the hair, the, the top bits. Um, so we might do that as well and we'll just take it on and we'll we'll carry on going and we'll add more to it just bringing my buttons they'd gone to sleep <laughs> this thing goes to sleep like after every few minutes so you have to push it and wake it up um i'm going i'm, I'm doing that thing where I, my brain is not with it and i can't think how to say goodbye um i will see you in part nine and we'll do everything that i've just talked about that i've already forgotten we'll do all of that and we'll carry on. <laughs> Take care, guys. Um, I'll see you soon. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Look after yourselves. Look after someone else. All the usual stuff. See you now. Bye. <laughs> Where's the button? My brain is so not with it. My camera's frozen. Why is my camera frozen? I don't know when that happened. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm just going. Bye, everyone. <laughs>